Sorry, I was going to sing a couple more verses there. But everything got quiet, uh, so I figured I would too. Fathers, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. We have gifts on the table in the middle of the foyer. If you didn't see that, it's in the middle of the foyer. Uh, and these are on there. Fathers, these are for you. Just something to say thank you and to honor you and uh, for you to take with you today. We uh, have just finished VBS this past week. And so uh, it was a great week. Takes a ton of effort to to put on the VBS that that we do. And children show up from our community. Our children they invite their friends. And so uh, it was a very busy week. Uh, there was so much going on. And I, I want to thank you all. I want to start by uh, thanking our other minister Zach Foot, who put in a tremendous amount of time, effort. Zach is a, an amazing planner. And uh, a worker, you will never outwork him if you, if you would try to work half as hard as him, which uh, many of you did this week. <laughs> wonderful job, wonderful job. So don't, don't try for the unattainable, but uh, Mr. Zach is a big blessing and to be commended for, for a, a lot of work on last week. But I want to thank all those in different areas, uh, those who uh, were part of registration, if you were a station leader, uh, you, you, you uh, put in tremendous work this past week. Guides uh, are in the trenches with our children. Those who uh, were involved with pictures or the nursery or decorations or cleanup. Especially, I want to thank those who are outdoors with games and uh, with the family night. Any who served outdoors, thank you. That was uh, uh, all of a sudden, someone turned the oven on and left it on and left the door open. It was hot. Um, our guards, our crossing guards, thank you. And uh, all those who brought cookies. We had more cookies than we could have fed. We, had, we still have cookies. Anyway, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful week. At the end of this morning, uh, we will have a little bit of time and uh, have a video that we'd like to share with you and for you to uh, enjoy. So Father's Day, you know, our, um, our nation and our, really our world has a history of, of men taking advantage of women with the power and strength that they have. And so, you know, there's a history of that. And as we do, as societies typically do, when you, make a, when you try to make a correction, it's so typical to overcorrect. And you now see... Uh, we see around us uh, and have seen for a number of years really the devaluing of fatherhood. And what's, what's interesting is now, a very recent years, we're starting to see that trend back and, and for people to correct back and realize, oh, wait, hold on a minute. Fathers are actually really important and they're really valuable. I want to share just a few statistics with you. And as I do, I... I I want to remind you, God has told us this from the beginning. So when humans figure something out, uh, it doesn't mean that they're really to be commended. God told us that from the beginning. But I do want to share this with you. You may find it helpful. Uh, a study that was done at the University of Texas, of all places, and I'm not, I don't want to badmouth Texas other than their sports teams, but as a university, it's a, it's a liberal university, and, but that university did a study, and the results show that 39%, excuse me, that children who grow up with, an, with involved fathers, children who grow up with involved fathers, they're 39% more likely to earn mostly A's in school, they're 45% less likely to repeat a grade, they're 60% less likely to be suspended or expelled from school, they are twice as likely to go to college and find a state and find stable employment after high school, they are 75 percent. Now these last two are are uh, even more um, noteworthy. 75 percent less likely to have a teen birth, and 80 percent less likely to spend time in jail. Fathers are important. They're important. They're valuable. In fact, the the state of Florida, their governor recently signed a bill providing $70 million in that state to support fatherhood. That's smart. I think that's smart. 
because fathers are valuable. And so just three things this morning I, I want to remind you of uh, regarding fathers. Fathers sacrifice to lead their families. And fathers who are here this morning, I want to commend you. I want to commend you. You could be anywhere this morning. And of all days that you could receive maybe extra uh, grace from your family, today's your day. You get two days, your birthday and today, fathers. Okay, This is one of your two. And you're here in the house of the Lord, and that's to be commended. Good job. Good job. Family uh, fathers sacrificed to lead their families. In our scripture reading this morning, Genesis 18, 19, for I've chosen him, this is about Abraham, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised. When you, when you uh, keep or do righteousness, that means doing the right thing. And doing the right thing is not always easy. And it's not always easy leading your family to the right thing. They may not agree that that's the right thing. But fathers, our job is to follow God and follow Scripture. And as we do, we are doing righteousness. And it's a sacrifice sometimes. Uh, Abraham was to, keep, was to lead his family to keep the way of the Lord. And that's what we are to do. Fathers, you are to lead your family to keep the way of the Lord. That's your job. That's what we are to do. Sometimes fathers try to do that. They try to lead their families, and, and uh, they find resistance sometimes with their families. And so families support the father in your house. He's not a perfect man, but if he's trying to lead in a good spiritual way, follow him. It may not be a perfect way, but if he's trying to follow God in a good way, follow him. Support him. That is your job. He will, uh, us fathers will answer one day for how we led our families. And families, you will answer for how you supported his leadership. And so we need that. Uh, if you had a father that led you to honor God, thank God for that. If you had a father, uh, and many of your fathers are past, but if you had a father that led you to honor God, Praise God for that. That's a wonderful thing. I, I have that. Uh, it's a gift. It's a blessing. Fathers sometimes... I want, I want to mention this. Fathers sometimes don't feel worthy to lead their family spiritually. Sometimes the father is not the most spiritual adult in the house. And so fathers sometimes can feel like they're not worthy to step out and say, let's do this. Let's, you know, we've been coming on Sunday mornings. Let's get up, let's get up earlier, which is later than we are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, usually for many people. But if a father says, let's get up and go to class. Let's start going to class. The father may not be the most spiritual in the household. I want to give you a strange example. You'll, you will agree with me that this is a little strange, I think. Let's say the father comes home Saturday night, he is stopped by the bar, he has drank and become drunk, and he comes home drunk. And whatever else happens after that, which would probably not be good, but let's say he does that. And then Sunday morning he wakes up, he knows, he shouldn't, he knows what he did Saturday night was a mistake and wrong. He feels bad for that, but he knows it's Sunday morning. We should go to church. But he doesn't feel worthy. Who is he to say to his family, let's get up and go? And I contend, and there's a, there, you know, there's a, a statement I would have you uh, take with you and really ponder on a statement. I didn't think this up, but it is never wrong. It is never the wrong time to do right. And it's never the right time to do wrong. It's never the wrong time to do right. That man who failed the night before spiritually, should he apologize to his family? Absolutely. Should he repent to God? Absolutely. Should he tell his family, let's get up and go to church? Absolutely. It's never the wrong time to do right. 
And fathers, you may not feel worthy to lead your family spiritually. You may not feel like the one to speak up and say, let's do right. But do it. Do it. That's your job. Anytime you do it, anytime you can do right, do it. All right, 1 Timothy 3, 4. You know, fathers sacrifice for their families. And this is a passage about elders, but it says he must manage his own household well. With all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he, take, how will he care for God's church? And so it's just that this is, I, I, I hold this scripture up as it reminds us, children are not to run the household. Children are learning. They're learning. They're to be cared for. They're to be taught and trained. And sometimes that means to be told no. And to be shown, mom and dad mean no. And if dad says no, and he means it, and he gives punishment or consequences, and the child will be unhappy. If they're not unhappy, you're not doing it right. And when your child's unhappy, it's a sacrifice for the parent. And fathers are uniquely positioned to discipline their children. Not too harshly, but we are uniquely positioned for that. And God expects us to do it. And sometimes it's a sacrifice when we do. And then Matthew, a scripture from when Jesus taught us, uh, in Matthew 20, 26, Jesus says, Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And I remind you, fathers, we serve. Fathers, when you sacrifice for your family, you serve. When you worry and you work so that your family's provided for, you serve. And when you make sure that they are safe, you serve. So number two, fathers are blessed when their children honor and obey them. And this, uh, excuse me, they are blessed. Uh, you're filling in your outlines, right? Honor and obey. Sometimes I go too fast. When they uh, honor and obey them. So Ephesians 6, 1, children obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. And, of course, you know, obey, obey your parents. This is when children are under the authority of their parents. So when they're growing up, for sure, when they, when they live uh, in their parents' home, when, when you're young and you're not grown yet, you obey your parents. When you mature, you still sometimes will, uh, you could say that you obey them, you do it out of love. But really, for the rest of your life, and from the beginning, you honor. So you honor your entire your life. You honor your parents, your father, your mother. You obey them for a time, but you honor them always. That's important that we do that. Um, and it's a blessing to fathers when children do that. And so reading on in this passage, verse 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So like I said earlier, we don't, fathers, we don't, we're not too harsh on our children. We're not to be, but we train them. Discipline and instruction of the Lord. When, when my kids uh, responded appropriately, when I told them something to do, asked them to do something, and they did it, that blesses me. As a father, that blesses you when children obey you. And when they do something that honors you, it, it is, uh, it's one of the most precious things in life. And it's not just today, of course. Uh, this is not a one-time-a-year honoring, but it's ongoing. In fact, here's a scripture you're familiar with. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. So we have a principle here about when children uh, grow older through life and the importance of uh, it's important to honor our fathers. My father is um, one of the most humble people I know, and dad, in a, in, a, in a way, dad is hard to buy for. He's hard to buy for because he grew up with parents who lived during the Depression, and uh, dad is used to getting by on little, and he's good with that. He's one of the most content people I know. Um, in fact, if you want to have some fun, go, go with him to a door and see if you can beat him to the door. 
Because my 80-year-old father, he will open the door for you. I don't care how quick you are. He will open it for you. Don't try, don't try to get him to go through the door before you. He, you're going before he does. That's what he does. All right? He just, <clears throat> anyway, he thinks of others. He, he doesn't need a lot, doesn't have a lot, doesn't wish for a lot. So it's kind of tricky to, it's difficult sometimes. I mean, we, we give him things, but <clears throat> he has packages of socks just waiting because we have socks that aren't wore out yet. I don't know how to paint this really well for you. <laughs> but recently, the, uh, the old self-propelled lawnmower, you know, was, uh, it wore out. So it's time for another lawnmower. And uh, technology has advanced to the point where, you know, battery technology is, has come a long ways. And so uh, recently the family came, we came together and we purchased a, a new self-propelled, battery-powered lawnmower. Now that, to a lot of you, that doesn't mean much. To some of you, that's pretty neat. Uh, it is lightweight. You don't have to mess with gas. Uh, when the carburetor's clogged, you know, it, that, that doesn't happen. This thing just works. And uh, it, it's a wonderful machine. And he loves it. And we love that he loves it. In fact, recently when there's a storm came through, tornado warning, warning sirens, uh, time to get to the, to the safe room, you know, wherever that is in your house. So dad... dad uh, was going to the safe room and he was gathering up things. You know how you do. You, you, you get all the things that you're going to need. So he got a flashlight, got his cell phone, cell phone charger, got his hat, got snack bag. How long are you going to be in here? Uh, his Bible. Do you take your Bible to your safe room when the tornado's coming? Isn't that good? Next time, when you're grabbing your flashlight, grab your Bible. If you have your phone, you have your Bible. Most of you. And he grabbed his lawnmower battery <laughs> and lawnmower battery charger. Because there might be an occasion and a way that things were destroyed, but the lawnmower's still in the garage and I've got my battery and my charger, okay? And I love that because I love that he felt honored and, and, and we could, you see what I mean? When, you're, when you honor your father, it's a blessing and fathers are blessed when children honor them. All right, number three. Fathers rejoice when their children walk with God. They rejoice when their children walk with God. Proverbs 23, 22 says, Listen to your father who gave you life and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy truth and do not sell it. Buy wisdom, instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and mother be glad. Let her who bore you rejoice. The greatest gift that you can give your father is to walk with God. And it doesn't matter if your father is already passed. It doesn't matter if your father did not walk with God, and he's already passed. If your father is alive, all circumstances, everyone has, a, if you never knew who your father was, it doesn't matter. The greatest gift you can give your father is to walk with God. That's the greatest thing I can do for my dad it's the greatest thing he can do for his dad. It's the greatest thing my girls can do for me. And I want to tell you, younger parents, if you have children who are younger or you plan to have children, someday when your children are adults, 
you know, are they going to be successful? Are they going to have a, how's their job? How are their finances? How is their health? Are they going to live near you? Are you going to have a relationship with them? All those things will pale in comparison to are they walking with God? Listen to me. That's the only thing you'll care about. So if you want to honor your father, the greatest thing you can do is walk with God. We're going to sing a song of encouragement. And if you're here this morning, uh, something you'd like us to stop and pray for you about and lift up to the father. If there's one this morning, maybe you're a father, maybe you're not, but you've never given your life to Christ. You've never signed on. You've never had your sins washed away in baptism. Let us help you with that. If there's something we can help you with, please come while we stand and sing. I have-